Welcome everyone to your chess guide. Let's have a look at some opening tactics in the field of defense. The field of defense starts with when white plays 1, e4, grabbing the center and opening up two of its major pieces. Black responds with the move e5, knight to f3, developing a piece and attacking the e5 pawn at the same time. Black has got several ways to provide a defense to that pawn and in field or defense black chose to play the pawn to d6. Now white directly strikes into the center by moving d4. Now white has got two attackers on the e5 pawn and black has got only one supporter. So black provides a defense by playing knight to d7 by the way black has some other options let's have a look at them as well moves like knight c6 won't work let's see why if black plays knight to c6 white can simply play pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn and queen takes queen if you capture king into queen then you lose your castling rights and if you capture knight into queen then you lose this pawn moving back therefore knight to c6 is not a good option and black went for knight to d7 now white proceeds with the move bishop to c4 developing the bishop and preparing for short castle White has also got a small threat in his pocket. If black plays something like nf6, then yes, white to play and execute his plan. Great, if you found the correct move, that is knight to g5, attacking f7 and winning the rook at least. So that's why anticipating the threat, that is knight to g5, black went for bishop e7. And even this move is a blunder. So it's white to play and what should white do? Simply open up its queen. That is pawn takes pawn. And now white's queen has got an access over the d5 square. After pawn takes pawn, black has got two options for recapturing. That is knight into e5 or else pawn into e5. Let's look at both the variations. If there is knight into e5, then white can simply play knight into e5, pawn takes e5, and go for queen h5, creating a double attack. Now white is threatening to capture the pawn on f7, as well as the e5 unsupported pawn is under attack. Black has to save his king, so black will go for g6, and now white simply takes the pawn on e5 and is a pawn up right from the beginning. Let's see what happens if there is pawn takes on e5. It's very simple. We just wanted control over the d5 square and we have got it. Now we play queen to d5 and black has got no ways to save the f7 pawn. All black can try is n6 bishop takes on h6 removing the defender and after short castle now black is threatening to take the bishop on h6 but white can simply retreat the bishop back to e3 to an active square and white is a piece up right from the beginning let's have a look at the position number two once again white starts with e4 black responds with e5 and now knight f3 d6 the standard move order of the Philidor defense d4 attacking the center knight d7 protecting the center bishop c4 developing the king side piece and preparing for short castle this time rather than playing bishop to e7 black chose to play pawn into d4 that is capture into the center now again white can recapture in two ways either by playing queen into d4 or knight into d4. It is recommended for white to go for knight into d4. 
capturing with the knight and moving the knight into the center. Now black plays bishop e7. This move is a blunder. We'll see why. Rather, black should have gone for nf6. But okay, he chose to go for bishop e7 and it's white to play and white needs to drag black's king out. How can white do that? It's very simple. In the very first move, you need to sacrifice a piece. So I hope you all found it. It's bishop takes on f7 check. King into f7. And once again, we need to carry on with the dragging process. That is, we need to bring black's king out. So again, white goes for the move. Knight to e6. As you all can see, white is sacrificing pieces one after the other. In the previous move, white went for bishop takes on f7, sacrificing a piece and after king f7, now knight e6, sacrificing another piece and attacking the queen at the same time. What happens if there is king into e6? It's very simple, white to play and checkmate in two moves, white goes for queen d5 check, king f6 and there you go, queen f5 mate. Moving back, that means that black cannot capture the knight on e6. So black has got to save his queen. The queen has got only one square, that is the queen on e8. And yes, now you can simply fork two of the major pieces. The queen and the rook is under attack. Black will save his queen. Again, white to play. Don't look for capturing the rook on a8. Look for a better alternative. It's white to play and finish off the game. Yes, I hope you all found it. The move is queen to d5 check. And no matter wherever black goes with his king, he is lost. The best way for black will be to go to f8 to at least keep on playing. If king f8, then there is simply knight e6. Forking the king and the queen. And if after king f6, then yes, queen f5 mate is coming up. That means after queen d5 check, black is lost. Let's have a look at the third and the most important and the most common variation of the Philidor defense. Let's move to the standard position. d4, knight d7, protecting the pawn. This time, Rather than playing bishop c4, white goes for knight c3. That doesn't make a difference. It's just a fluctuation into the move order. Bishop e7 and now white comes up with bishop c4 again. And this time, black decided to play c6. Black is trying to get a hold on the d5 square. But once again, such moves doesn't work out in the opening. You need to focus on the principles. So white plays pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And yes, this move is very important. Take a pause if you're willing to find it. So now white plays knight to g5, giving up the knight for free. But white has calculated two to three moves ahead. First of all, white is threatening to take on f7 with the bishop and then play any 6 check after the king moves to f8. So for that sake, black has to provide a defense, black can play nh6 for it, but can't black just take the knight on g5, isn't that knight for free? No it's not. Now white can make a move that creates a double attack, that is queen h5. Attacking the f7 pawn threatening a checkmate and at the same time attacking the bishop on g5. Now black has to play g6 to which white can simply respond queen g5, queen g5, bishop takes on g5 and right from the beginning white has got at least a bishop pair. That is a minute advantage. So after knight g5 maybe black can try knight h6. Now this move is very important to find white to play and attack the g7 pawn however it is possible. 
no matter whatever you need to sacrifice go for it but just create an attack on the g7 pawn yes i hope you all found it the move is knight e6 attacking the g7 pawn and the queen at the same time all black can do is take f into e6 opening up his king's diagonal to which white can simply respond now it's a winning combination white just needs to be careful the combination starts with bishop h6 capturing the knight taking his knight back black takes back in order to maintain his material advantage now simply it's white to play and checkmate in the upcoming few moves white goes for queen h5 check king f8 and now white needs to make a move that threatens a mate on the f7 square so simply bishop takes on e6 threatening queen f7 checkmate all black can do is try queen e8 stop the checkmate for a while but yes it's game over now queen h6 leads to a checkmate these were the three videos of the philidor defense hope you all found it useful do like the video share our video and subscribe to your chess guide thank you very much stay tuned for more opening tactics